This election is just the turning point. It really is. It is the turning point. And it is the moment of, I believe, ultimate loss or the beginning of turning the page. But either way, the road is tough ahead of us because it is being paved by evil. Frances Fox Piven is a woman who you might remember. She's the defenders on the left. They claim that she's nothing but a sweet, precious, loving grandmother who bakes cookies and pies and puddings and jams and jelly and churns her own butter every night for not just her grandchildren, but her neighbor's grandchildren and the dog down the street that's a little bit sick and the neighborhood shut-ins and the handicapped veterans and the poor children at the school bake sales and She's actually an awful lot like Ain't B from Mayberry RFD, only much, much more kind and gentle than Ain't B. <laughs> Occasionally, she'll take off the oven mitts and she'll turn off the stove and she attends a sweet old lady conference or two where she says precious and gentle things like this. I think that we need to re-elect Barack Obama, uh, not because he's going to respond just because we have a dialogue with him, but we need to re-elect him uh, because he is vulnerable to the kind of momentum, pressure, leverage that a movement like Strike Debt can exert. He will have to respond, and he won't be able to respond by calling out the National Guard. Uh, we don't want to elect, we don't want Romney, a Republican uh, Senate, a Republican House, because they might well respond with repression. Uh, so, yes, Okay, understand. She's saying that there's going to be riots on the street. The sweet grandmother. Riots on the street, and you don't want a president that will suppress it. Now, Granny Piven, this is the truest thing you've ever said. Barack Obama is vulnerable to the radical groups like Occupy Wall Street. He is vulnerable to them. And mean old Mitt Romney, no doubt, would call in the National Guard to shut down violent protests from people who are anarchists and are claiming they want to overthrow the government of the United States. That's not repression. That's constitutional in the job description of the President of the United States. If you don't think that that should be the constitutional oath of the President, then we should all vote on that. But the attempts to overthrow the United States government is what exactly so many on the left are calling for and Francis Fox Piven in between the cooking, you know, the, you know, while she's got the timer on so she knows that the cookies won't burn, she works on the overthrow of the government. Where Barack Obama might share one of your fresh-baked danishes, you know, and maybe a spot of Earl Grey tea that Grandma is cooking up on the stove and then sit down and talk about their grievances with the United States. Romney would make sure that the Constitution is upheld, innocent businesses were not ransacked, that freedom can continue to survive and thrive in this country, and voices like yours and voices like mine are not extinguished. I warn you, America. I warn you. It will be very hard to find voices like mine in two years. Granny Fox Piven wants you to re-elect Barack Obama. Okay. Guess who else is sitting down with Occupy Wall Street? Something we predicted over a year ago, that radical Islamists would get together with the radicals in the Occupy Wall Street movement and discuss their mutual hatred of the United States and Israel and plot the overthrow. Well, radical Islamist slash 12th Imam believer, and if you don't know what the 12th Imam is, please look it up. If you don't think evil exists, you will after you read about the 12th Imam. Is something so evil that even the um, uh, Ayatollah Khomeini, who was the original Islamist crazy man in Iran, banned the twelfth, uh, the Twelvers, the people who believed in the Twelfth Imam, because he said they were too crazy and dangerous. That's who's in charge of Iran now. Hater of Israel, hater of the United States, one that has his crowds chanting "Death to America." 
He is now meeting with Occupy Wall Street in New York City this week. Evil? If Occupy Wall Street was just a nice group of young people who only wanted fairness for everybody and were just a little irate, a little bit, at the ATM you know, fees at their local bank, would they be meeting with America's staunchest and most vile enemies? Someone who denies the Holocaust? has vowed to eliminate Israel. We told you we should play the video of the anti-Israeli, anti-Semitic stuff that happened at Occupy Wall Street. Was the Holocaust evil? Someone who believes that America is the great Satan. Now, I don't know any Americans, any Americans that want to meet with this man, that can find anything in common with this man. I don't know anybody who even wants to listen to this man. But Occupy Wall Streeters are not like ordinary Americans. So far, for anybody who has not yet decided on whom you're going to vote for this November, here's an important thing to keep in mind. No matter what you believe about the past four years concerning the economy, Barack Obama's ideology or his promise of hope and change, this isn't me saying things about Obama being vulnerable to the Occupy movement. It is the leftist radicals, one of his allies, someone who actually wants him to win re-election. They show this videotape behind the scenes of Mitt Romney at a cocktail party where he says 47% won't vote for me because they're getting the handouts and it will be too hard for them to vote for me. And suddenly that's the biggest story in the world. Yet we have Obama supporters behind the scenes plotting the overthrow, the violent overthrow of the United States of America, and that's no big deal. And don't forget, this is how the president feels about Occupy Wall Street and the people that are currently this week going to be meeting with Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. This is how he feels about them. I think it expresses the frustrations that the American people feel that we had the biggest financial crisis since the Great Depression, huge collateral damage all throughout the country, all across Main Street, and yet you're still seeing some of the same folks who acted irresponsibly uh, trying to fight efforts to crack down on abusive practices that got us into this problem in the first place. So, yes, I think people are frustrated and, you know, the, the, the protesters uh, are giving voice to a more broad-based frustration about how our financial system works. Okay. He never said that about the Tea Party. Never. Never. But he did about these guys. Now, is it because these guys understand redistribution of wealth because they are socialist, communist, and anarchists? How do we structure government systems that pool resources and hence facilitate some redistribution, because I actually believe in redistribution, uh, at least at a certain level, to make sure that everybody's got a shot. So he is vulnerable to that sentiment, but is he that misguided that he thinks that this is what this movement is about, that he doesn't recognize he knows the people? He knows the people that are in the unions that are orchestrating this, the Francis Fox Pivens of the world. He knows them. He's, he grew up around, about, uh, around communist revolutionaries. He knows their speak. Let's say he, he grew up around them and he knows it, but he doesn't agree with it anymore. How could he be so blind to think this is just about the banking system is not really, it's not transparent enough? How could he possibly be this blind? And then to have the Occupy Wall Street people meet with Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Would he do it? Would I would. Uh, and the reason is this, that the notion that somehow not talking to countries uh, is punishment to them, uh, which has been the guiding uh, diplomatic principle of this administration, is ridiculous. So maybe that explains why he's not talking to Israel? I don't, I don't understand. What's ridiculous is the notion that any American leader would meet with and legitimize a man who believes as Ahmadinejad does, threatens us, our ally in Israel. What's ridiculous is this man is still 
within 40 points of any my shoe running for president of the United States, let alone leading in most of the polls today. What's ridiculous is this notion that we have a media filled with journalists that are telling you the truth. They are colluding. They are not incompetent. They are colluding. They are part and parcel of the problem in this country. I know firsthand. They are willing to cover. They are willing to uh, change the subject. They are willing to out and out lie. I don't assign, I don't ass- assign uh, motive because I don't know. I don't care. They are participating in lying, defaming, smearing, and, and at the very least, lies of omission on Mitt Romney. It is not time for just change in leadership in America. It is time for fundamental transformation back to who we are, not who we were under George W. Bush. Nobody's calling for that. That's ridiculous. Not for a a time tunnel, even back to Ronald Reagan days. But to the fundamental transformation of who we were at the Declaration of Independence, that man can and should rule himself, that the best system of government is one that starts in the home, that our only king is God, and dare I say it, Jesus Christ. He is our king. God will save us. That doesn't mean that we persecute anybody who disagrees with us. It doesn't mean that we can't live hand in hand. It means that we recognize who is in charge, and it certainly is not us. When you look at the polls, I want you to ask yourself, Why are you bringing a knife to a gunfight? If you think you are fighting just a political system here in America, you are wrong. Read Ephesians. If you think that we are uh, are fighting um, uh, just Islamic extremists, you're wrong. You will not win with man's best minds put together. There is no way to win. I don't tell you that lightly. There is no way for you to win except one. Beg for divine providence and divine pre- uh, protection. We are 40 days away. 40 days, 40 nights. Beg. Plead. Pray like you've never prayed before. Cry out to him day and night. It is our only chance. You're fighting evil.